I would like to deserve my um, uh, my applause, um, Max. So we'll see how it goes in a, in about nine and a half minutes. Um, I think, first of all, it's extremely great to see that the cruise industry has has uh, has been part of the agenda now for this session. Um, it's so important for the cruise industry to be present and to educate all the stakeholders about the value of cruise industry. And we've already seen a lot of questions today, uh, a lot of perceptions about the cruise industry and what the cruise industry can do and what it can't do, and obviously a lot of the challenges. So education is absolutely key. Um, for us to be here. Actually, our CEO wanted to be here and actually committed to be here present uh, today. Since we don't have one, they had to take the fifth best or whatever. Um, so, uh, so, so, but I'm, I'm really fortunate to be here and I'm really pleased. Uh, so thanks for having us and in inviting us for this event. And, and just briefly to answer your question, uh, Max, um, what is Cruise Lines International Association? Well, we're an association that are um, trying to act as one uh, industry and one voice. Obviously very heavily uh, focused uh, in Washington DC, uh, in Brussels, working with the regulators, uh, with IMO, uh, with EU, uh, lobbying, discussing all the challenges, trying to make it easier for operators uh, like uh, AIDA, uh, just presenting, to operate their ships, uh, to discuss the standards um, and to make sure that we can continue to grow this business uh, in a sustainable way. Um, but it's also our role to, to, to educate and, and there's thousands and thousands of travel agents, part of our association, that we pre uh, educate every single day in order to be able to sell the cruise experience in a better way. Because the potential, as you've already seen, is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. But if I ask this audience, I don't know how many have been on a cruise in here. And when I say cruise, it's not from Kiel to Oslo. It's got to be like four, five, six days, all inclusive, no cars, uh, no trucks. How many, how many people are cruising in here? All right, so this is the scary part, or maybe, Mr. Unger, this is the opportunity. In Europe, I think it's one and a half percent of the population uh, that has been on a cruise. Um, Germany, UK, Australia, uh, by the way, a chairman, president, is doing a lot better than the average. Uh, North America, the most um, uh, educated, developed market, is only three and a half percent of the population. And this is one of the reasons why we continue to see investments in this industry. And, and, um, and, as well. and we have a lot of executive partners, I men mentioned that a little bit later. So we've already seen these numbers. It's a continued growth. Why? Because, like Mr. Ongar said, we're delivering an amazing experience. People are so thrilled when they've been on a cruise. They get addicted to cruise, like Mr. Ward said. The loyalty is extremely high. And when we ask our guests in our recent studies, they actually say they would prefer this from a land-based vacation. The problem is we still have so many, and just look at Germany, how many Germans that would travel to Mallorca or the Canary Islands or whatever to spend a week like they've done the last 30 years instead of going on an AIDA or TUI or Hapak Lloyd ship and get an even better experience. So it, it's going to take us some time to do it, but, but uh, we're definitely on the right track and delivering really, really good benefits. And we saw it, an investment of 25 billion US dollars taking place over the next years. So when we talk about the chicken and the egg, and Sydney, and uh, I think it was the port of Eden in New South Wales. Well, this is a very interesting discussion uh, and something hopefully we can discuss on the panel because we need to invest in infrastructure um, in order to accommodate for all these fantastic ships. And as you know, the ships only get bigger. Even the small luxury ships, ships get bigger. Uh, so what used to be 250 small luxury ship on, uh, let's just say, Silver Sea now becomes 750. So, so there is a need for infrastructure, um, but, but, but a lot more as well. Uh, my numbers are better than, than yours um, and Douglas, and, uh, and the good news from, from the perspective of, of Europe that's not mentioned here is actually that Europe is almost benefiting uh, just as much as North America when it comes to the cruise industry, obviously because the shipbuilding is taking place in Europe. We have all the four major shipyards based in, in, in Europe, uh, benefiting tremendously and creating, uh, I think, about 340,000 jobs just in Europe uh, within this industry. So, so it's not a question of the, the industry is doing something good, despite the fact that we only half a percent of, I guess, of the maritime impact. But, but who's going to get the business? And this is the funny competitive uh, part of the story. And I'll, I'll just reverse a little bit because there's some good friends and colleagues of mine in the audience. And I used to uh, work before I joined CLIA a few years ago. I used to promote the idea of cruising in the Baltic Sea. So going to St. Petersburg, Stockholm, Tallinn, Helsinki, uh, or Berlin. Uh, and people always say Berlin. Do you have a port in Berlin? No, but you have one in Rostock uh, or Kiel. And uh, desperate Americans, uh, they don't mind traveling three and a half hours uh, to get to, uh, to Berlin, whether it's from Hamburg, Rostock, or from, from Kiel. 
because they want to explore the destination. And with no disrespect for ports, they don't really care about the port. They just want to get through the port as quickly as possible to explore the destination. Obviously, it's different for turnaround ports, like Roberto explained really nicely. Uh, there's a lot more logistics taking place, a lot more things that can go wrong. But, 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 but is the port a strategic asset? Uh, I know Liverpool has developed since your beautiful images, um, Douglas. So certainly some cities do see the importance of this. But this is not a port decision. This is a regional decision. I think Hamburg is a prime example of it. I absolutely love Hamburg. I used to not like it so much because I was competing, representing Copenhagen, uh, having a little bit of a different value proposition but one thing that we also did in this small niche of an industry is like we actually uh, benchmarked we discussed best, best practices uh, how could Hamburg learn from the from Copenhagen and how we organized and vice versa uh, and I always envied uh, Hamburg I still do just look at the cruise days that's taking place here the big trade shows taking place in Hamburg having several national cruise operators must be a dream Hamburg you're very very spoiled Hamburg uh, in Copenhagen we have one uh, shipping line it's called mask it's not really uh, providing a lot of guests any experiences uh, except for some crew so you know we've had a little bit of a competitive but also best practice uh, mindset and, and I'll get back to that because that's absolutely critical for this industry to develop further so what is this well this is a cruise port and it's an airport and we often see airports and development in airports being really really strategic and and we see top quality investments and then when we go to the port side of it hmm, not always that impressive and when Dr showed that pedestrian walk remember that picture earlier you actually saw that there was a guy from the port actually walking behind making sure that they kept on the pedestrian walk because we don't want to see any trucks or anything hit any passengers right and I thought that was a positive picture because there was a pedestrian walk um, and, and, and this, is, this, this is where we are in this industry. This industry is absolutely not developed when it comes to infrastructure. Of course, Venice is a different example. Of course, Barcelona and Hamburg and with Steinwerder opening on, on Tuesday is doing great, great things. But there's thousands of ports out there, thousands of ports, and some of them do not have any facilities. But anyway, I think we'll get into the, the, the panel discussion later. I'm getting carried away anyway. So, um, so we'll see how, um, how, how we get along. But, but, but I always say there's a warning here. Please, ports, remember this. Also in Busan in Korea, this is called a virus, right? And it's called travelitis. Um, it's got to do with tourism. It's got to do with living human beings that are getting an incredible experience on board that AIDA ship. And then they step into a container uh, in some cargo port somewhere because they need to provide destinations to their guests. And once they've been on one ship and two ships and three ships, and because they're so loyal, they want to see other destinations. And then it's the chicken and the egg situation again. How do we manage to develop those destinations, invest in those destinations, and make sure it becomes profitable? Because of course the cruise industry is profitable. Of course ports are making money on, on cruise businesses. But you have to start slow and you have to grow with the industry. And there's no guarantees of business uh, as well. So it is a very interesting discussion. I hope we'll get time to, to, to discuss it later. So anyway, uh, I actually spoke to a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the cruise lines that I'm working with, and, and those are the people that actually decide which ports to go to. Where do we need to make investments? And, 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 and this is sort of part of the messages. And, um, and I think I had about 20 quotes from them. I'm only showing four or five. And maybe some of you can recognize some of this. Um, only smaller ports are creative and meet our greed and our guests in a positive way. There's also a lot of big ports that take business for granted. Uh, Venice is not one of them. I've been there, super passionate people, uh, really trying to do everything they can to impact the, uh, the guests in a positive way. But, but ports, I'm sorry, you guys are sometimes super, super nerdy. And you know everything about the ship, you know everything about the width, you know everything about the depth, and you don't know a lot about the guests, what nationality they have, what languages they speak, how they need to be accommodated. So, so I think the message from the cruise industry and, and what I've been working with is really that we need to work together. It's so important that the city, if we take Hamburg uh, and the port authorities of Hamburg, the private terminal operators, uh, the cruise lines, the buses, the taxis, um, uh, the sightseeing, uh, all the attractions. Uh, I mean, Copenhagen would be nice if the shops were open on Sundays when we have you know, five ships in port. You can't take that for granted. 
Um, there's so much you need to do, and you need to invest uh, time in educating all the stakeholders in order to make this a profitable business. That's partly what we do in CLIA as well. Uh, we actually have a platform of engagement. Uh, Roberto is, is, is one of our members in, in Venice. Uh, Cruisegate Hamburg, I'm very proud to say, is one of our, our members. Uh, AIDA is one of our members. Uh, what we try to do is to create a platform where we can discuss the challenges and where we can actually discuss between AIDA and VTP in Venice what are the challenges of the industry? How do we make sure that we move on profitably in a sustainable way? So anyway, I hope you guys are excited about the cruise opportunity, and I really think you should explore it, and you know, we're very much available to help you uh, get to the right people, uh, introduce you to the right people, and try to avoid some of those mistakes that a lot of ports do when they get into the cruise industry. Building big and expensive is not necessarily the right thing to do, and I think we're seeing that in Asia. Uh, who's going to pay for it? We saw some incredible, uh, you showed it, uh, Douglas. It's going to be the cruise line operators or the passengers. And we don't need fancy facilities if it's not sustainable and if it's not relevant. Uh, and these are also some of the messages that we discuss in, in, in our industry as well. So anyway, thanks again for giving CLIA and myself the opportunity to be here. I'm really excited about it and congratulations on a great conference. Thank you very much.